any one cell is listening to hundreds of signals at any one time and has to integrate all those signals and decide to do something like to move or not move or divide or not divide For example, if you were hearing the voices of many people telling you what to do, you're in a situation, you're in a room, and the room's on fire, and somebody's saying, go to the window, and somebody else saying, go to the door, and the other one's saying, turn off the light, you know, put blankets under the door cracks, all those things are happening all at once, people screaming at you. The thing you don't want to do is to be paralyzed. You need to integrate all these things and make a decision and run for the door or run for the window or do something. And so a cell is integrating all these signals all of the time and making these all or none decisions. Move, divide, stay where you are, become something else. And these are very complex integration events that are happening inside the cell and we don't understand how a cell does it. How do we know that cells receive all these signals and they regulate all these activities. Well, one way you know is if you take a cell and put it alone in a culture dish and remove all the signals. It doesn't divide, it doesn't move. In fact, it doesn't survive. And it turns out that for cells to stay alive, they need signals from other cells to tell them to stay alive. And if they don't get those signals, then they kill themselves. happening all the time. I mean, cells are dying in us all the time. During the course of an hour, billions of your cells will die by programmed cell death. They'll commit suicide. The cells are programmed to die automatically, it seems. That the only reason it's not killing itself, the only reason any cell in your body is alive, the only reason is that other cells are constantly telling it, don't kill yourself. Dans le domaine de la mort cellulaire, il est extrêmement tentant de faire appel à des images empruntées à la mort de l'individu, en particulier à la mort humaine. L'utilisation des mots suicide, par exemple, a fait beaucoup pour populariser le domaine, mais également pour figer un petit peu la pensée dans une certaine interprétation. Le suicide d'une cellule n'est pas vraiment un suicide, dans la mesure où ce n'est pas la cellule qui décide de mourir. Je pense que les analogies sont faites et je pense qu'elles sont utiles parce qu'elles nous permettent de penser d'une façon familière. Donc, par le suicide, nous disons qu'il y a un acte de participation sur la partie de la cellule qui est mort. La notion d'un phénomène actif en ce qui concerne la mort cellulaire vient d'une observation qui était que dans certains cas de mort cellulaire, la cellule doit synthétiser de nouvelles molécules pour mourir. Et si on bloque la synthèse de ces nouvelles molécules, en fait, la cellule ne peut pas mourir. Alors, ceci suggérait effectivement la notion de participation de la cellule à sa propre mort, puisque la cellule doit fabriquer quelque chose pour mourir. So this is an intrinsic, cell intrinsic program. It can be activated 
by signals from other cells. So the cell's happily living, moving, doing its thing. It can receive signals that tell it to commit suicide, and it'll do this program. These cells are not killed. They're told to die. Den Zelltod, der von außen induziert wird, vorstellen als das Drücken eines Klingelknopfes oder eines Todesknopfes, wenn man so will. Also der Tod klopft an die Tür und drückt die Klingel und veranlasst aber denjenigen, der quasi drin sitzt, den Tod von alleine zu bewerkstelligen. So this is a coordinated program, just like the cell division program is a coordinated set of events that divides the cell in two. This is a coordinated set of events that kills the cell in a very neat way. And the cell goes through this little dance where its surface boils, then it shrinks and condenses and stops moving altogether. The first step is basically kill. Take a happy, healthy cell and make it dead. The second step involves engulfing that dying cell corpse. And so there's a neighboring cell that swallows the dying cell. We'll call that step, step of engulfment. And then the third step that destroys the evidence. So we'll call here destroy, and that leaves you with nothing at the end. It's a very important process because if the cell died in a messy sort of way and spilt all of its guts all over the place, that induces an inflammatory response and that would be very dangerous for the animal. So this is a program to kill a cell neatly. It's remarkable that you take this complex structure and it's gone in an hour or so. This death program is uh, enormously useful because you do need to get rid of a lot of cells to build a normal animal. For example, look at our hands or feet, which are a little harder to display at the moment, and what you see are fingers and toes, and they're separated from each other. But if you looked at a developing human being in the womb, what you would see is the fingers and toes are not separated, but rather they're connected by webbing. What happens is the cells in between die. Right? So that the cells that are left are the ones that go to make the fingers. The duck's foot is wet. That's important for a duck. It swims.